Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another installation video. This time around, I have for you an installation walkthrough of the recently released Fedora 31. We're going to install it on this laptop right here. It's my tried and true System76 lemur. We're going to be installing directly on this hardware, and you'll see the process via HDMI capture. And I'm going to show you the process of wiping the drive and installing Fedora 31. Now, the process of installing Fedora has really not changed all that much. So if you've seen a previous Fedora installation video on my channel, well, chances are it's going to be the same thing again. But I always like to keep these installation videos up to date with the latest release. And if nothing else, it would be fun to look back on these, you know, years from now to see what distributions used to look like. Maybe this will become kind of like a time capsule, so to speak. I think that might be kind of fun. So I've already gone ahead and I've created my bootable flash drive. I just downloaded the ISO image for Fedora 31 and then I wrote it to this flash drive. Fedora actually has an image writer now for Windows and Mac OS, which is pretty cool. I haven't had a chance to check that out, but I always use the etcher method because it's the same regardless of what operating system you are using. So if you haven't already done so, just download the ISO image and then check out my video on Etcher where I will walk you through the process of creating a bootable installation media from that ISO image. And uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So I am going to power on my laptop right now and access the boot menu which with each computer it's going to be a different key combination to access that. And in case you're wondering what the boot menu looks like on a System76 Lemur laptop, well, worry no more. This is it right here. As you can see, I have an entry for Pop! OS up at the top, which was the most recent distribution that I tried on this machine. I'm going to go and select my flash drive. Of course, yours will be named differently. And then I'm going to press Enter. So here we have an option to test the media that will make sure that you created your bootable flash drive properly. Or you can just go straight to starting Fedora, which is what I'm going to do to save a little time here. So here we are. We have successfully booted into Fedora. We are actually running the real Fedora. This is not an illusion. We are running in live mode. If you haven't already seen this yet, most Linux distributions feature live mode, which allows you to demo the distribution before installing it. So that basically means it's running the OS directly off the flash drive, which unfortunately could mean that it could run a little slow. So the speed that you experience in live mode is not necessarily going to reflect the speed of the final installed version. As you can see, we have an option to try Fedora or to install it directly to the hard drive. We're not going to install it just yet. We just want to make sure a few things work first. So we're going to go ahead and connect to Wi-Fi. If you have Wi-Fi, if you have an Ethernet cable plugged in, you might see an Ethernet icon up here, which means you're already connected. I see nothing, though. So I'm going to go ahead and select my network. And mine is this one up here at the top. And we should be connected. As you can see, the Wi-Fi indicator light up here lit up, so we are online. And then just to make sure that that is working, we can launch the default browser, which is Firefox. And then we could just go to any website. So we could go to mine, for example, just to make sure the internet is working. And then you can also just click on any one of my videos and you can see that your sound is working as well. And then once you have confirmed that everything is working properly, we can go ahead and install this distribution. So let's go ahead and get that going. I'll go ahead and close this and then we could choose the install to hard drive option that we see right here. So here is the Fedora 31 installer. There's not very many steps here so this process does go by pretty quick. At the beginning it just asks us to set up our language option so go ahead and set yours accordingly. I'm going to leave mine at the default. And here we have the main installation screen. So the first thing we can do is customize our keyboard if necessary. If English US is correct for you, you don't even have to click on this. But if you want to set that to something else, then you could go ahead and add a different keyboard layout here if you'd like. 
and I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel because I don't have any way of testing that. But if you uh, do have a different keyboard layout, you might want to test that out. But for me, English US is the proper selection, which is already there. So I'll just click done. Now we have the installation destination option right here, which is required. So I'll go ahead and click on that. We have two disks on my system. We have the SSD right here, and this, of course, is the flash drive. We don't want to wipe that one. In this video, I am going to wipe out everything and install fresh. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that disk. And if you'd like, you can also encrypt your installation as well. This is encryption at rest, which means when your laptop is off, your hard drive is encrypted. When you boot it, it'll ask you for a password, which will unencrypt it. So this is useful in a situation, an unfortunate situation, where your laptop is stolen or your disk is, uh, you know, someone tries to access the data. They're not going to be able to do that without your password. So I'm going to go ahead and just select that. But you can select that if you'd like. It doesn't matter. And I'll click Done. Since I chose to encrypt my hard drive, I do need to select a password for that. So I'm going to go ahead and type in the password that I want that to be. And then I'm going to save it. Now in this case, I already have a Linux distribution installed on this disk, so I have an option to reclaim space. In my case, I actually want to wipe it completely, so I'm going to go ahead and reclaim. I'm going to delete everything. And then I'm going to click reclaim space. Now we have satisfied the requirements for this option right here. And then next we can select time and date, which may already be correct. What this is going to do is give you an option to select your area. Now I'm over here in Detroit, which, you know, um, is probably closer to like right there. It doesn't matter though, because I am in the right time zone. And that's what matters because you basically want to make sure that you're in the right area because again, it sets your time zone, which is important. And it also sets other settings as well. You just want to make sure that you are in the right time zone because that will set your clock accordingly. Network time is enabled by default. I recommend that you leave that. That'll make sure that your clock is synchronized with Fedora's time servers, which, you know, that's a good benefit to have. So I see no reason why you should turn that off. Basically, you just leave that checked. Now we have satisfied all of the requirements for this screen right here, and we can begin installation. And since I did wipe out my disk, this is going to delete everything. So if you are wiping your computer, hopefully you have a backup of everything. And if you're sure you want to continue, just go ahead and click begin installation. At this point, we are installing. We can watch the progress bar right here fill up as the process continues. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this and I will be right back when it's finished. All right, so once your installation is complete, you'll see down here that the uh, Finish Installation button appears. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And here we are back at the Fedora desktop. Now we're not actually running Fedora yet. The installer basically just exited. We do need to reboot our computer in order to use the new installation. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I just clicked up here at the top right corner I'm going to hit what looks like a power icon right here and then choose the restart option. So here we are. We have successfully booted into Fedora 31. We see this welcome screen right here. I'm going to go ahead and step through that. So I'll click next. And at the first screen, we can select our privacy settings so we can enable or disable location services. I'm going to leave that completely up to you. If you have any of these online accounts right here, you can go ahead and click on one, which will allow you to log in and benefit from that. You could see things like calendar synchronization and uh, notifications and things like that from these services if you do sign into any of these. So I'll go ahead and skip that for now. And we need to select a username. So I'm going to go ahead and put in mine. I think that's good enough. And then I'll set my password.
definitely want to have a strong password here. I guess mine's good enough. So click Next. And then you're ready to start using this release. And then once you get through all of these steps, you should basically be at the Fedora desktop. You'll see this getting started guide right here, which will show you a little bit about how to use the user interface. And you'll be good to go to use this distribution. So I will have a review of this release on my channel very soon. So definitely check that out. But as you can see, we were able to install Fedora 31. So there you go. We have successfully installed Fedora 31. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. It's not a complicated installation by any stretch of the imagination, but you know, I definitely wanted to make sure I had an updated video to show you guys what the process looks like and I have accomplished that. Again, stay tuned for my Fedora 31 review, which should be on my channel very soon. I'll see you there. Thanks for checking out my video. I really appreciate it. If you found it useful, click that like button. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe so you'll see the latest content as soon as it becomes available. If you want to help me out, there's links down below for my Patreon page, as well as links for purchasing my Linux books and also my affiliate store, which has a listing of Linux compatible hardware that I've actually tested personally. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.